Russell Westbrook, Bradley Beal, uh, how are they looking for tomorrow? Um, good, good. I think Brad's going to um, talk to play a few minutes, not a lot. Russell, we haven't made a decision on him yet. Um, there's a good chance DB um, participated in some of the practices today, uh, some of it, uh, but he probably won't play tomorrow. Hopefully he can get a game in uh, Saturday. Everybody else, uh, Rui did not practice, still his eye irritation. So don't know about him tomorrow as well, but we'll see how he feels tomorrow. And uh, I wanted to ask you about Thomas Bryant. You know, last year he shot 40% from three. Uh, in 46 games, it was two attempts a game. Um, do you, how many attempts do you want him to take this year? Do you want to see that volume go up now that he's proven he can, you know, hold that percentage? No, I think he's, he's been proven. I mean, we see it every day. He's a good shooter. I think with him, as any five in the league, they have to be able to, that, that can shoot. You have to be able to pick and have a good balance on rolling because that creates uh, rim attacks and, and opportunities for him to get to the free throw line and also kick out threes. And he has to have the balance of being able to pop. Um, he will have um, a better better feel for that the more he plays with, with Russell. Um, there's times where he has to roll and then he, then he pops. And there's times where he should pop or he rolls. I think those are less frequent now than they were last season. So if his numbers go up to three to four, um, that'd be great. And I probably, I can probably actually see that. Fred. Hey, Scott, I, I was just wondering if you could go into a little deeper detail on what you need to see from Russell in order to get him to play. I mean, what is, what is actually preventing him from being able to go out in the court? Well, the thing, the thing with, with Russell, he's been able to do just about everything we've done. Um, bits and pieces, all the, all the scrimmaging and, and practices today, went through some of the practices, uh, some of the practice. Um, with him being whatever it is, 13 years, um, an exhibition is not gonna make it much of a difference for him getting a lot of good reps in practice with, uh, with the group that he probably will be starting with, with one, one guy still fighting for that spot. Uh, so we don't see it against competition, but we see it uh, with our guys every day. And we've been pretty competitive. So I, I, it's kind of good to see that normally, sometimes you would say that you, know, you need a couple of games under your belt before you start the season. But with him, he's probably the exception to that rule. Uh, like I said, he's been in the league long enough. He knows what he needs to do and get his uh, rhythm back. And uh, regarding Rui's eye, I remember he had an eye thing last year. Is that at all related? I don't think so. I don't think so. I just think he has just an eye ir irritation. Um, they keep telling me it's, you know, it's day to day. So, Got it. Thanks, Scott. You're welcome. Chris Miller. Hey, Scotty, how are you? Chris, I'm good. Good. Um, is there anything in terms of your small forward decision that has kind of opened your mind to the possibility of someone winning that job now? Or will you take this, I guess, to opening night? No, I, I, th I still think it's up. It's up in the air. Uh, we can go so many different ways. Uh, and then probably whoever starts the first game, um, I don't know that that he will always be there. It's probably going to be a pretty fluid uh, position until somebody can really uh, solidify it. And it might not even be a, 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 a type of a deal where the guys actually play well, but maybe the unit hasn't. Maybe we need to uh, mix it up. Maybe the, the second unit needs more of that guy's uh, skill set. But we do have, you know, three or even four guys that bring something different. Um, so it's pretty much it's still we're, we're got a couple of games to figure that out and a couple of practices after that. 
And because that they're young, is it easy for them or easy for you and the staff to say that this position could potentially be a matchup? One night we might need a lockdown to guard whoever. The next night we might need some offense. Like, is that a good thing to have going into opening night, really not knowing who that player could be? Yeah, I mean, and then the way the league is now, it's a lot of times it's um, it's a scaled down. It's a scaled down league where you can have two point guards in the game, or you can have two threes in the game, or you can have two fours in the game. Or some teams go with three smalls. And we have the ability to do that. I mean, we have uh, Ish and Hau at the, at the guards, and they can play. I mean, Hau is a good enough shooter. He can play with Russell. He can play with Ish. And, you know, if we want to go that, that route, and then you can always shift everybody else down. Uh, and I think we have that. I think we have that ability to do that throughout the season with that spot. So unless somebody comes and, and then things are going really well, there's no reason to change, but um, we can go young. We can go young. We can go with our, I mean, we did it last year with, with Rui started a, as a, as a drafted player and Denny actually, he definitely has a good chance to be that guy as well. Ava. Hey Scott, I can't remember who exactly told us yesterday that um, Russ kind of was telling all the younger guys, know your role, stick to your role in practice. Have you, I guess, where do you judge the Troy Browns, Thomas Bryant, you guys you call your young vets um, in terms of feeling comfortable in their specific roles? Because the last time they were all in court together, when you guys were in the bubble, they had to step up and kind of set the tone and do all of that stuff. And now, I guess, have, have people kind of settled a little bit in that regard? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the tricky thing with players. I've been there before as a player. I've seen it many times as a coach. Um, when you have guys out um, or, or a younger team, so you're trying to figure out where their game can go and then you give, you know, you give a little bit more freedom and creativity. And then sometimes, you know, you think that's, that's going to be the natural – uh, trajectory, but a lot of times that's not. I mean, we've gotten we're a much better team um, today than we were in the bubble. We played hard, we competed, a lot of guys got opportunities, but we did, we came up short a lot. Uh, but every game was competitive, and I, I'm proud of our guys' effort. But our team is better now, so the role that you had there is going to change, unless you unless you can continue to show us and, 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 and stay with that role. But, you know, we added, you know, an MVP. We added a, a big, strong, tough uh, defensive rim protector and, and a guy that knows how to play and Robin. And then down the line with the guys that we brought in, uh, Raul is, uh, Raul is a guy that is definitely uh, has been intriguing and been impressive all camp. So he might get roles, but everybody played a different role then that they will now. And, and we will, they, those roles will be well-defined. Um, and we have, you know, before the first game, we, have, we will all know our roles. And most of them know it now. I'm still figuring out on which guys can do whatever, um, you know, whatever, if you get a rebound, they can bring it up the court. Uh, don't know that yet. I, I see maybe a couple other guys other than our guards, um, but that's still up in the air. And specifically with that, what were your conversations like with Thomas Bryan after the first preseason game in terms of his role and what you need from him as an anchor on the defense and, and all of that? Yeah, we just, we need a better start. Um, I know we were out with a lot of guys and obviously they had their, they're all their top guys, but we still, I didn't like the start that we had defensively. We've talked about it enough. And, you know, Kyrie made like four or five tough, tough shots, but he still made them. Uh, we can't continue to say that. But I think he needs to do uh, – take more pride in that to start the games. And he has. You know, I don't think we had that good start last game. But I, I see going forward that he's much better defensively because we need it. We definitely need his ability to be a better defender. Zach. Hey, coach. Uh, I joined late, so I apologize if you addressed this already. But uh, first of all, is Rui playing tomorrow night? 
Zach, it's good to hear from you, buddy. Good to see you. When are you coming back? I'm back, actually. I just got back yesterday. All right, thanks for the heads up. <laughs> uh, you guys don't mind us having a normal conversation. You guys can just listen. <laughs> now, hey, um, I don't know. Rui has eye irritation the last two days. Uh, nothing serious, nothing to be concerned of. Uh, don't know if he's going to play tomorrow. Uh, I would like to. I like him to play because the more minutes he has, the, the better he will become. He's a still a young developing player, needs reps. But uh, we'll see how he feels when he wakes up tomorrow morning. Uh, if he's not available, that's, you know, that's part of it. He still has another exhibition game to go, but he's still, like today, it's uh, he seemed He seemed very decisive the last game. Is this something you've talked to him recently about? I mean, making quicker reads? Yeah, I mean, I think the feel for the game, he, he's always had a pretty steady feel. Um, I mean, he's, he's a pretty, his demeanor is always pretty level. Uh, but I think the the feel, the, the game, like every young player, it slows down. You guys hear it enough, but it's 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 true. It does slow down. It's weird how how that happens. You're just so you get so used to the speed. And I think it I think he's getting getting there. He's not there yet. Um, but I thought he I thought he came out um, and had a tough assignment. I mean he was guarding one of the world's greatest offensive players in KD. I thought he was pretty solid throughout the game guarding him. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Is that it? All right, a couple more. A couple more. Okay. Neil? Jeez. Hey, Coach. I'm curious, uh, compared to previous seasons, how much of the units that you scrimmage with during practice are purely ones versus twos? Or do you mix it up a lot more? Or maybe this season, because you don't have your ones playing a lot of time in the preseason, do you go solely with your starters a lot during practice? It's it's a combination, Neil. We're doing it. We're mixing it up. We're going with the guys that we think that can start, and we're trying to give other guys opportunities to play with that lineup because no matter who you start, you got to be able to uh, play with many different uh, lineups because then a lot of times the starters don't could not be the finishers. So you have to be able to work on different lineups. And we, and we do that. This has been an extremely competitive camp. And I, I, this is probably the, the favorite um, out of all my um, four camps here, uh, or five now. Um, they, they're just, they're, they're, their competitive spirit is high every day. As you go in as a coach, you think, okay, this could be the day that that we just don't have it, but every day somebody sparks something to make it very competitive, and we got really good players. I mean, last year I thought it was great. We played with the we played with the passion, but we was it was so new for a lot of players, and uh, a lot of times we had to slow things down to, to teach and 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 figure things out much slower pace. But this year it's much more faster pace. The guys that we brought in, the new players, know how to play but they've raised the level, the intensity level has just been like incredible. I, I just hope that we can continue this because this is how you get better. You get better by pushing each other in practice and then come game time, you're pulling for each other. Thanks coach. Thank you. All right, last one, Anthony. Hey coach, hope all is well. I know that you spoke about the, the small forward position as being fluid this season with a lot of guys switching in and out. Um, Troy Brown being one of them, I guess, looking forward to the, uh, the next two games against Detroit. Do you see Troy Brown getting any action at the point guard position? Well, he, he did last game. That's just not, it's just not uh, his position really. I mean, he can play uh, some opportunities maybe in a, in a pinch. He's had, he's had it in the bubble a few, few games and he's had it the first game. I wanted him to really just focus on being uh, a player instead of just being a, a backup point guard. He has an opportunity to, to start at that three spot and play minutes, um, but it's competitive. I will say this, it's been as competitive as, you know, the, over last year we had, um, our players are better this year and the competitions are gonna be really tough. It's gonna be hard for guys that get got minute got minutes last year to get the same amount or any minutes this year, it's just the way it is. We've got a, a lot of good players um, 
some some of those positions that they might have uh, got those minutes last year. But I think Troy just got to keep working and and keep um, being focused on what he needs to do to get on the court. That's awesome. all. Point guard. Uh, we got we got three, four guards, four guys at that spot with Cash. Hey Thomas, hope you're doing well. We talked to Robin a few days ago, and he was telling us that you know you guys have had a relationship for a few years now, and I'm curious, you know, what that relationship was when you were on opposing teams, and now, you know, what kind of relationship you guys are able to have now that you're teammates. Uh, our relationship has always been really good. Um, we've always had mutual respect for each other. We always uh, looked out for each other. We always never had any bad intentions. He knows I'm a comic book and a manga guy and cartoon guy, just like him. So. It was a, you know, mutual bond on that level right there. But uh, as growing, you know, he's been a real good fit. Him and his brother as well. You know, I played with his brother for for a year in, in L.A. And then now I'm playing with him more often. And, you know, it's just good to try and pick his brain. You know, he's been around the league a long, very long time. Good experience. Great experience, actually. Played on great teams with, with great players. And, you know, it's really good to have him on his team and, you know, and uh, learn from him. Thanks, Thomas. Chris Miller. What's good, TB? How are you? Hello, Chris, how you doing? I'm good, brother. Good to see you. Uh, I'm interested when what Neil was talking about. There's always mutual respect, but seeing him on a daily basis, can you describe what you're learning from him? Maybe not in the conversation, but maybe the way he, something as small as a box out or the way his technique is, um, you know, in, in, in the post fighting a guy, like what are some of those things that you're kind of taking away from him? You know, his technique on everything, you know, whether it's offensive and defensive end, especially on defense, he's a real good defensive player as well. And, uh, you know, just reading the game, you know, I can see like, you know, throughout his years, you know, he has a very good niche on reading the game. And I try to put my, you know, try to put my basketball wits into action, you know, just try to react stuff, react to stuff quicker, just like he does, you know, with every situation he's put in. Appreciate it. Chase. Hey, Thomas. Um, you uh, shot 40% from the three-point line last year, um, and it was on two attempts. That was a little bit more volume than you had previously. Um, what are kind of your goals for increasing the volume? I would imagine uh, that gave you a good level of confidence going into this season. Oh, yeah, it gave me a great level of confidence, but, you know, I'm just taking shots that the defense is going to give me. You know, my teammates – trust me into making those shots. And, you know, I have a little bit more, you know, a little bit, I wouldn't say leeway, but more confidence in my teammates to, you know, if, if, if I'm open right there, give him the ball and he's gonna knock that shot down. And, you know, I really give all my thanks to my teammates right there. You know, the work that I put in throughout the summers and, uh, you know, throughout when we were here at the practice facility with the guys and everything, you know, you take that stuff seriously and it develops and turns out the points on the court. And uh, I know, obviously, rim protection has been a big point of emphasis for you. Have you studied any rim protectors and what they do? And, and if so, what, what do you kind of look for when you watch uh, film of other guys? Uh, really just look at their technique and niche, you know. Um, that's really about it, really. Fred. Hey, Thomas. Uh, you... Uh, you already have very obvious pick and roll chemistry with Brad. I'm wondering stylistically, is it any different running a pick and roll with Russell? Like, do you feel like you have to do anything differently there? Mm -mm. I don't feel like I have to do anything at all different. Russ is such a dynamic player to where he can score and pass in so many great ways to where it's very easy to play with him. You know, you play hard, you play defense, you make open shots. They're going to come to you <laughs> every time you got a dynamic point guard like Russ coming with, you know, playing with you. And then me playing with Brad, you know, we always had that chemistry since day one. I tried to build that, you know, throughout the moments and times that we do play together in practice and in games to keep building that from, you know, as much as we can. And then there, th there was a play specifically where, where you got the ball in the perimeter during that first exhibition. You swung to Rui for uh, a wing three on the left side. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, how, how would you evaluate your decision making and, and can now compared to like two, three years ago when you first come into the league? Are those sorts of plays, are you making those plays quicker now or are you reading the floor differently? Yeah, a lot quicker. And I, I feel like that, that comes with time development. You know, putting it, being put in situations where you get burnt, and then being in put, 
being put in situations where you succeed. And it all it all comes together as soon as, you know, you go through those experiences and the game starts to slow down a little bit more. Uh, I see myself making more plays and my teammates have confidence in me to make those plays as well. And, uh, you know, it's so much easier when you got, we got so many dynamic guys out there, especially with Brad and, and Russ out there, making those plays and having confidence in yourself and the confidence in your teammates helps us, helps so much more as well. Thanks, Thomas. Mm -hmm. Ava. Hey, Thomas. Um, uh, we heard that Russ earlier this week was talking about just everybody finding their roles on the team and kind of sticking to their roles, especially with him and Brad coming back in the future to kind of be those leading um, figures. How do you feel like the transition for you from the bubble where you guys were asked to be, you were asked to be the team leaders and kind of asked to step up and do a lot more. How has that mental transition been for you coming back now and, and remembering like, okay, right, I have to, you know, be the anchor on defense or be whatever exactly Scott tells me to be? It's not that hard at all. You know, we, as Russ said before, and as I'm saying now, we all have roles on this team that we have to be, you know, try and perfect that. No one's, no one's more than a team, no one's less than a team. We all have our jobs that we have to do. And we all try to do it to the best of our abilities. With me, um, from the previous, from the previous bubble, you know, we didn't really have that much to handle with. You know, it was all, it was pretty much all new, diff all new different group. Now we have Brad Bertans and dynamic point guard of Russ, more chemistry, more guys have, have learned over the summer and over the time in the bubble. And it just makes that, it just makes our team so much, so much better than it was before. And for me on a personal standpoint, I'm not worried about everything else. I'm worried about, you know, defending and winning. When did you kind of make that switch or did you come into the league with that mindset? I feel like so many times for rookies, the tendency is to overextend and overexert their game. What was the, was there a moment, I guess, for you where you were like, oh, this is all I have to do. All I have to do is, is do exactly what my job is. I mean, when you, when you are a basketball player, you have to do what your job is. So, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much it. self-explanatory to me. You know, some guys have might have difficulty, you know, because as a rookie, you don't really know what your way is. So that's when you talk to, that's when you talk to guys, uh, talk to your coaches, see what they specifically need from you. And you try and perfect that as much as you can. And then, you know, as time goes on, you might get uh, a little bit more uh, trusting in your teammates and coaches and as well. But that, that just goes on as time. What have you seen from Cassius Winston? I feel like you might have an interesting uh, perspective on him coming into the league as a backup point guard. Man, you know what? I watched Cash back in uh, – so we were in De – I was in Detroit when he was at uh, Michigan State. So they were on TV a lot. I watched Cash a lot. Uh, Cash is special. Um, I know when you come in, he didn't get an opportunity, him, um, Denny, any of the rookies that came in, they really didn't get a great – chance like most of us did because it was no summer league so they're getting it right now on the fly so i just try to tell them for the most part stay in his ear being aggressive just play your game just do what you do um so i love his game i love his game at michigan state his pace his ability to make plays knock down shots it's not nothing on the floor he really can't do um so just trying to get him to be like yo just be aggressive just be aggressive uh because it is a lot as a freshman i mean not as a freshman as a rookie soaking in everything, giving everything. Uh, people giving you a lot of information, um, trying to comprehend it and then put it on the floor while still playing your game. Uh, so I just, you know, just stand in his ear. Once everybody is finished talking, be like, man, just do what you do. Uh, so I, I, I'm a huge fan of him. I watched him play at State again, like I said. And um, so uh, the, the future is really, really bright for him and uh, Denny. Ava? Hey, Ish, um, since you were sidelined for that first preseason game, just wondering what you saw, especially maybe in the first half when we've heard a lot of people say things are a little rocky, you need to kind of get things under control there. What did you see from your perspective? Just the first game, uh, you know, first game trying to figure it out. Uh, obviously, Russ Brad went out there, uh, myself and some other guys, you know, trying to figure it out, trying to, you know, see uh, where they fit. Um, you're playing against, you know, Katie, um, you're playing against Kyrie, 
Uh, you're playing against those guys. It's their first game. And so you're kind of trying to figure out, like, you know, it, it's a reality now. There's no more watching them on TV or, or whatever the case is. Now you're playing. So uh, for me, I never get too high, too low. Uh, as you see how my career has went, I, I don't get too high, too low. So for me, I never thought it was anything bad. Uh, but what I saw was how they responded, how we responded in the second half. And that was impressive. That was impressive um, because life is all about, you know, and this game is all about, you know, you getting hit and how you bounce back from the hit. Uh, so I thought it was it was good. We kept fighting. We tried to figure some things out and uh, we responded in the second half. And um, obviously you guys still have a lot of moving part in terms of who's getting minutes in which preseason game. What's the chemistry on court feel like to you so far? Um, it's getting better. It's getting better. And these practices are important. They're huge because we're not, as you know, don't get a full preseason. Uh, like I said, the guys didn't get a, a full summer league, either the second year guys or the guys who are supposed to be rookies. Um, so it's all kind of coming really, really fast. And um, coach is throwing a lot, throwing a lot. And so you got to comprehend it, uh, soak it in and be ready to roll on the fly. So, uh, but again, these, port, these practices are important. These preseason games are, you know, important. These next two um, to really get a good feel because you want to hit the floor running as soon as, uh, as soon as it starts December 23rd. Thanks, Ish. Yes, man. Fred. Hey, what's going on, Ish? What's up, man? Um, do you see a playmaking gene in Denny? Yes. Yes. What, what? Is that is that a natural thing? I don't know if you even know him well enough to answer the question now. Is that a natural thing for him? Like what where do you see it come through? Yeah, um, I do think playmaking ability is just natural. I do think it's in you. Just like I think scoring is just in you, rebounding is in you. Um, I think those things are just next. Um I, you know, I, I was watching the other day what was it, the uh, last dance. And Dennis Rodman, how he would talk about how balls would bounce and he would calculate it. I think Denny is in the same sense of, he just has a knack of making plays. Um, and that's impressive because, you know, most guys are just score, 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 score. And then you have to teach him like, yo, when you see this guy step up, then you make that bounce pass. He really um, enjoys making plays for others. Um, you know, creating the offense, moving the basketball. And when he's open, I, as we've seen the last preseason game, he can shoot the ball really, really well. Uh, but he does have a knack and it's in his gene. And I, I do think it's in your DNA. And when you see somebody come to you, you just kick it. It's just natural. Does, does that translate, like those traits that make you a good playmaker, does that translate to other facets of offense? Like, does it, does it translate to cutting or or is that a sort of different part of the basketball mind? Well, that's a good question because it's different types of playmaking. Um, and like you said, like sometimes if you're a, I remember uh, Tony Allen, I played with Tony Allen. He was really good at cutting. And that cut sometimes people, he didn't have the basketball. And so he didn't have the ball crossing guys over like Mike Conley did when I was in Memphis to make plays. But his cutting would create a wide open three for somebody or his back cuts would create, he would catch it, he'd go to dunk it, then drop it off the Zebo. Uh, so it is so many different facets of playmaking. Um, and I think when you come from uh, having a ball in your hands and, and creating so much offense, that's just your natural knack. The back cutting and the different things, I think, are just you just playing in the game, just playing in the game. I remember playing against Tony Parker. He always had the ball in his hands. And then later parts, as we all know, as he got older, he would back cut you, dribble handoffs, you know, so it's those different facets. And I think you get that as you, you know, the longer you play in this league. Thank you, Ish. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Neil. Hey, Ish. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but before now, the only time you played with Russ was in 2014-15 and not even for the full, for the full season. Um, I guess you guys seem to have a really good relationship. I'm curious, first, when did that start? And then how has that grown over the last decade? Yeah, me and Russ was the same draft class. It's funny because everybody in, and we were just talking in the locker room, everybody think we old. So me, Russ, and, and Rolo, Robin, 
were all in the same, not draft class, all in the same class, 2006 class. And um, I remember Robin and Brooke being at the NBA camp here at Virginia Commonwealth. And I remember playing in that. And uh, I remember, I was telling him, I remember his mom uh, was there. And I remember, you know, all three of them. And um, me and Russ met, um, Russ was deciding between UCLA and Wake Forest. We, I think we came in late. And I remember Skip, God rest his soul, Coach Prosser called me and was like, hey, we got this dynamic player. This dude is special. He's going to be special. Could you come down? And so I lived in Charlotte, well, Harrisburg, North Carolina, which is 45 minutes to an hour uh, to, uh, I drove to Winston-Salem and I had already committed. And uh, Russ is a late bloomer. So Russ is all of a sudden grown to like 6'4", uh, super athletic. And they're like, yo, we want Russ. Um, and so I was like, all right, cool. I'll drive down there. So I drove down there and me and Russ just hung out, just hanging out, laughing, just having a good time. And so then all of a sudden he, uh, but we kind of knew that he was deciding to see if Jordan Farmer was going to stay in school or not. And we knew from at Los Angeles all the way to Winston-Salem was going to be a, it's, it's, it's a long trip and it's, it's a little bit of a culture shock because it's cold and all those different things. So, uh, but me and him just built a relationship from there. And then when I got in the league, we would always talk uh, before and after games and, you know, the relationship grew from there. So that's where we kind of started at. Uh, it was like on a, his, he was on an official visit and, uh, you know, he made the right decision. <laughs> Thanks, Fish. Yes, sir. Chase, did you have another? Yeah, Ish, uh, I don't think we've asked you about your injury. Are, are you feeling better? How, how's that going? I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm good, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm fine. I'm still fast, so I'm good. And then uh, I have a question that I guess is about four months late, but it might have an interesting answer. Um, we talked so much about you going into the bubble, and I know you guys weren't there as long as some other teams, but what was it like to leave the bubble? and go back into you know, or the real world, I guess. What, what were the, what's like the first thing you did and what was that feeling like? I joke around with people, it was like the Truman Show in the bubble. <laughs> so you feel like uh, when you're in the bubble, it was cool. Like the outside world, you don't even know what's going on. And then once you get outside and uh, you, you know, we landed back in uh, DC, um, I just came home and honestly, I just slept for like a week. I don't even think I went anywhere. Um, Cause I mean, we were still on lockdown in a sense. Uh, so the bubble was cool to me. I thought the NBA did a heck of a job. Man, they did a great job. I thought everybody that went to the bubble that was from my team, we really like bonded. Uh, we did a lot of fun things together. Uh, so we, we enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, I didn't do much. I just came home um, and just chilled. I drove to Asheville, North Carolina. Stayed at the Biltmore, that was nice. But other than that, it was, I didn't do much of nothing because, um, you know, we had to quickly get back to it, um, get back to work. I'm pretty simple. I don't really do much of nothing. I'm about to go hey, Jeff, I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ish, are you just now watching The Last Dance? Is that what you said? No, I've seen The Last Dance like 20 times. Okay, I was just making sure, that's all. <laughs> that's it. I've seen The Last Dance like 20 times, man. I don't, Matter of fact, I got a park right beside me. I think I went outside one time and did the Michael Jordan move like a couple of times. <laughs> no, no lie. Like I honestly, like, if you don't get inspired by the last dance, I don't, I mean, that's just, you know, but I was a huge Michael Jordan fan growing up. I can understand how kids today is like, yo, I love LeBron. LeBron's special. But I mean, it's MJ for me twice on Sunday. So that's what makes you the old guy in the locker room, ish. Yeah, that is 32. <laughs> the old guy. Everybody else, 24, 25. <laughs>